Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Today we are going to go through the perfect tenses. I've been watching the American elections and it's reminded me that Americans don't really use the present perfect, whereas British people use the present perfect all the time. It's very important for us, and I'll tell you why in a moment. But just before we get to that, um, if you're a fan of movies, I see Lindsay Lohan's making a comeback. I haven't heard of Lindsay Lohan for, for years, but anyway... She's just uh, picked up a new role in the movie Falling for Christmas. And that's Lindsay Lohan's latest return to acting. And she sings as well, doesn't she? Yeah. Um, I think she's actually singing in this movie as well. So something to look out for if you like Lindsay Lohan. A little bit trashy, but uh, yeah, well, at least she's coming back. And she got married recently as well, didn't she? to the Kuwaiti banker. Um, His name was, or is, Bader Shamas. Bader Shamas. Oh, they look good together, don't they? Uh, She's here in the news today, uh, talking about her new return to acting, of course, and saying that uh, life with Badir is amazing. And uh, she kept their marriage a secret, she says. She says she has an amazing husband. Nice. Anyway, let's move on to the present perfect. So, the first thing you need to know is that if you talk about the past tense, or if you talk using the past tense, you are effectively talking about a date and a time. Okay, so the past tense is always answering a question about when. When did you do that job? I did that job on Monday. I did that job. Okay, so even if no time is mentioned, it's always answering a when question. Or even maybe a where question. Where were you? Oh, I was outside. Yeah. So even if a time isn't mentioned, the past tense is like a big archive where everything is stored in the order of time and date. The present tenses, on the other hand, are the opposite. They have nothing to do with time. They're all about action and whether something has been done or not. So the time is irrelevant in the present perfect, but it's very important in the past tense. So let me give you an example. And this is the example I always use in our classes. So if, for example, your boss says, okay, where were you yesterday? And you reply, I was sick. That's all he needs to know, unless he actually cares. But he'll say, okay, thank you. And he goes to his Excel spreadsheet and he marks you as being sick. But if your mother calls you and she says, hey, how are you? If you say, oh, I was sick, you know that's not enough information for your mother. She doesn't care about when you were sick. She's not going to say, oh, really, when? She's going to say, How are you? How have you been? Uh, She wants to know that your health is okay. She doesn't really care about the, the time that you were sick, you know. So she's going to be asking questions like, how have you been? Have you taken medicine? Have you had uh, this problem before? So you see, all of this invokes the present perfect. There has to be a way in English we can talk about things outside of time. And in moments of illness, that's one of those times. Uh, Another time we often use the present perfect 
would be when we're talking about uh, things which are much deeper in life. The arts, poetry, things which don't have a beginning or an ending. It would be very strange, for example, to say to your wife or husband, yeah, I loved you yesterday, but I don't love you today. You know, so we it's a way that we talk about things which simply continue without a beginning and without an end. Of course, you can use start and end dates if something clearly has a start and end date, but it's not really going to express your feelings. The next time you have a lesson with me here on italki, um, if you ask me, I'll give you my present perfect booklet, which talks about these things in a lot of detail. Um, the present perfect is really important for um, building up relationships. So let me give you an example. Imagine you're with a bunch of friends, okay, in the coffee shop. The friends aren't going to say, hey, how are you? Because that means at a very specific moment. So they're going to say, how have you been? Because using the present perfect, they're not talking about a moment in time in the past. They're just saying, how's your actions been? You know, how, what have you been doing? Um, and so if you answer that with the past tense, oh, I did this, I finished my work, I took the dog to the vet, I went to the hospital with my mother on Thursday, I got a promotion at work on Friday, your friends would say, well, okay, why, why are you telling me a list of things that you've done? They're looking for more general answers. Yeah, I've been fine. I've been busy. Um, they weren't looking for very specific dates and times because they're trying to build up a friendship with you. And if you keep talking about time, you're giving a psychological message which says, I don't have a lot of time for you. You know, if you imagine you're sitting around with a group of friends and you all start talking about, on Monday I did this, on Tuesday I did that, you'd all be looking at your diaries and thinking, why am I here? <laughs> There's other things that I could be doing. <clears throat> you know, life is not just one big diary. So we often talk outside of time. Uh, it's respectful to other people and it's also a way of showing people that we don't just live in our diaries, you know. It's different in America, however. The, the past tense is used more. So if you say to an American uh, um, something that maybe is, is important for them, uh, such as, uh, have you walked the dog today? Uh, they won't say, no, I haven't walked the dog. They'll say, no, I didn't walk the dog. They they rather prefer the past tense. It's just the way that they are. They speak differently. So you don't really hear much of the present perfect on American media. Just to recap then, uh, basically you um, you need to be aware that if you're talking about actions, such as someone dying, someone being sick, someone getting something, and you're talking about the person, not the time the thing happened, the present perfect is a way to give them more respect. Whereas if you use the past tense, you're only ever talking about time. Now, you have a choice there. You can choose when to use either one of those, uh, but... If you use the past tense one, there's not a lot of room there for expressing emotion. And you have to be careful with that, especially in things like job interviews, because experience, for example, is not something you get in a day. It's not something that, that, that can be um, managed. For example, oh, I learned English in 1996. Well, maybe you did, but I'm sure it was a journey longer than that. You know, as a child, I learned mathematics at age four. 
I'm sure you didn't. I'm sure you learned mathematics between age four and 13. So you see, it's not really possible to use only the past tense with these things. So as you gain experience and as you talk about experience in a job interview, it would be things like, I have worked in this job for six years. During this time, I have had experience with. So this is why it's important. You're giving a very direct message with the past tense that you're dealing with fact. But with the present perfect, you're dealing with emotions, feelings, blocks of time rather than one specific moment. And that's also really very important. Um, about the booklet, uh, my present perfect booklet, what I'll do is I will paste the text of that booklet in my transcript for this lesson. Isn't it good doing these transcripts? <laughs> Keeps me busy. Keeps me off the streets. Speaking of the streets, there's a terrible storm outside. I can hear it. Honestly, these dark mornings, it's a little bit like Wuthering Heights around here. Wuthering Heights was a gothic novel um, from the 19th century by, I think, Emily Bronte. <laughs> and there was always wind rolling down the moors and uh, storms outside the house. Quite creepy, but a lovely book. A hard book, but lovely. Right, uh, I hope that gives you a, a kind of intro into the perfect tenses. Do read my book uh, when you come across it in the transcript. And until soon, I wish you all a wonderful day.